Donna Betts, Clinical Research Advisor for Creative Forces. Compelling preliminary evidence put forth by Creative Forces Research supports the use of art therapy in promoting rehabilitation and recovery for military and veteran populations exposed to trauma. Findings from our published research, including case reports, correlational analyses of secondary data, and program evaluation studies, justify continued growth of the Creative Forces program. Now let's hear about some of this work directly from the source. Melissa Walker is the lead art therapist for Creative Forces and the Healing Arts Program Coordinator at the National Intrepid Center of Excellence. Dr. Garija Kaimal is a board certified art therapist and an associate professor of the PhD program in Creative Arts Therapies at Drexel University. Today we'll be talking about research which occurred at the National Intrepid Center of Excellence at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. The NICO is a center which treats service members with traumatic brain injury and associated psychological health conditions. We have an intensive outpatient program, or IOP, in which we see the service members for four weeks. During that time, they have a set template that incorporates creative arts therapies treatment as standard of care. Within art therapy, they're seen in the first week for group mask making and the last week for montage painting. They're also seen individually throughout the four weeks with the opportunity for a family session in the fourth week, allowing for continued work on art therapy projects and more personalized care. When they're admitted to the center, they are given the opportunity to consent to the collection of all standard clinical data, which is then entered into a research database, which can be retrospectively analyzed. Over time, we were able to collect images of the artwork made, as well as clinicians' notes with the clinicians' observations and the service members' thoughts about what they intended their artwork to symbolize. So we knew we needed to create a research partnership to help us analyze all of this content, and that's when we reached out to Drexel University, which has a PhD program in creative arts therapies. Working in collaboration with Creative Forces, we have developed a model for how clinicians and researchers can work together effectively. Working together, we are able to tap into the deep knowledge and understanding of patient experiences brought by the clinicians, along with the researchers' expertise in rigorous and systematic research methodologies. One of the important things to note in research collaborations with the military is that very often, we need to have signed data sharing agreements and cooperative research and development agreements that need to be established between partner institutions. Establishing these agreements between Drexel and NICO is what enabled us to share de-identified data and conduct some of the analyses that we went on to publish from our collaboration. We'll start by talking about the first of our studies, which was a case study of a senior military service member. What this case study really highlighted is how art therapy is uniquely positioned to help service members manage the symptoms of post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. This particular service member was initially wary of engaging in treatments outside of conventional military medicine. However, his perspective shifted when his psychiatrist convinced him to try acupuncture treatment. During acupuncture treatment, the service member would see vivid images related to his deployments. Some of these images were also presenting themselves during flashbacks and in his dreams. One image was related to the moment he sustained his brain injury. The base where the service member was deployed suffered a mortar attack. He crawled into a bunker and lost consciousness, and when he woke up, there was a bloody face staring back at him. He quickly recognized the image was a hallucination, but it continued to haunt him in both waking life and during his sleep. For seven years. Up until this point, he'd never spoken about it. Because acupuncture had proven helpful for him, he decided to give art therapy a try. During the first session, the service member shared that the masks on the walls immediately reminded him of the image, which he had eventually named Bloody Face and Bunker, or BFib. The military loves their acronyms. When he depicted BFib in a mask, he was amazed. It was stressful at first because it was something that had haunted him, but once he expressed it in the artwork, he was able to externalize it and think of it as outside of his body and safe in the art therapy studio. As a result of this experience, he went from seeing the flashback several times a day to only a few times a year. We also put it in a box to further contain the image and explore what it meant to him. Was it a personification of the wartime experience? Was it the loss of a buddy? 
After the four-week IOP program ended, the service member chose to continue long-term outpatient care in art therapy. Following art therapy products included the recreation of the mortar attack in his moment of injury, which was also presenting as a flashback. The patient brought in shrapnel that was removed from his body after the blast, as well as sand from the base where he was deployed. These symbolic objects, which were sitting around his house, were integrated into his painting, allowing him to display them in a safe and meaningful way. The service member shared that during the creation of the mixed media painting, the flashbacks became less intrusive. He began to focus on them in order to alter the painting to better match the moment, taking control of the trauma and using it in a productive way. Within the case study write-up, we were able to take the artwork and the patient's feedback combined with the clinical notes that were captured by the art therapist, and as Garija alluded to, we could convey the impact of art therapy, and particularly mask making, on a patient over time. Eventually, this service member began to also participate in music therapy, and after treatment, he continued creating art on his own. It's important to also note here that this was possible only because of the extensive clinical preparation of the facilitating art therapist, who could support the patient manage, process, and overcome these debilitating flashbacks. Art making alone would not have enabled the service member to manage his symptoms. After this initial case study, we went on to do a comprehensive analysis of artwork made by service members. We had thousands of cases and pieces of artwork captured as part of the retrospective protocol data set, and we were able to work with Drexel University to pull the data and analyze close to 400 of the masks that had been made. We worked with a data sharing agreement that allowed for the exchange of de-identified information. One of the advantages of the data set was that all the patient data was consented for research purposes. This allowed us to examine visual art data as well as related information about patient demographics, clinical conditions, and experiences. So we began our study by first identifying masks and clinical notes that would help us look for patterns over time. Out of over 1,000 archived images, we distilled down to around 400 for which we had both mask images and clinical notes. In our analysis, we didn't examine the images in isolation. We also considered the clinical notes that gave context and the descriptions of what the masks meant to the service members. It is in connecting that personal meaning with the visual image that we conducted our analyses and identified recurring patterns. So we had a final data set of approximately 400 images and clinical notes, and we first looked at them to see if we found any overarching patterns. We began to code it, which basically means put a tag on the image and the clinical notes, to identify recurring themes and patterns. In looking at these images over several months, in close analysis, we found that there was a recurring framework in how service members with post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury represented themselves. This included representing themselves as individuals, in relationship, in community, in society broadly, as well as their perceptions of themselves over time. And in each of these ways in which service members represented themselves, there could be a positive association or a negative association. For example, a service member might refer to themselves focusing on their injury or their source of strength. In relationship, they might represent someone they have lost, or they might focus on the relationships that sustain them and give them strength. Related to the theme of community, several service members referred to a great sense of belonging and connectedness to their military unit or branch, and several also spoke about their existential reflections on what it meant to be a soldier at this time, in this context, and how their self-perception might have changed over time through their experiences. Here are some mask images which correspond to the identity construct Garija just described. This mask represents physical injury and depicts how the service member had part of his skull removed to alleviate the pressure after an IED explosion, as well as the shrapnel that pierced his face. This mask represents psychological injury and the service member's inability to open up about the trauma. This mask represents military community, integrating content symbolic of, of the buddies who were deployed with the service member when he was injured. And this mask also represents military community, as well as love for his country, 
integrating a patriotic Roman numeral VI as a nod to the service member's military team. We also saw some representation of societal and cultural images, including characters such as the Joker, as seen in this mask. Service members also explored existential and moral injury, depicted in this mask as a tattered and torn American flag. Finally, service members represented sense of self and in over time, as seen in this mask representing questioning about his injuries and who he will become. We were also able to take the mask themes and correlate them to post-traumatic stress, anxiety, and depression self-report scores, and through that research, our Drexel colleagues found some strong correlations. As Melissa indicated, after analyzing the images and finding these strong thematic patterns, we wondered if the images could be predictive of psychological states, especially depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress. So since we had access to de-identified clinical data, we examined correlations between the themes represented visually and the individual scores of post-traumatic stress measured using the post-traumatic stress checklist, depression measured using the PHQ-9, and anxiety measured using the GAD-7 scale. These are all standardized measures used extensively in clinical assessments. What we found was that certain representations were indicative of risk, while others were indicative of resilience. For example, service members who represented a strong sense of identity and connection with the military were found to have lower post-traumatic stress scores. And conversely, those who represented psychological injury were found to have higher post-traumatic stress scores. Similarly, representation of visual metaphors was associated with lower anxiety, again indicating that the ability to represent oneself visually in a coherent and complex way was associated with improved psychological functioning. We also examined similar themes in the montage paintings, which were done in week four of the treatment protocol. We found visual indicators of risk and resilience in the imagery here as well. To the best of our knowledge, this is one of the first series of studies to really highlight the connections between how we represent ourselves visually and what the content of these images might indicate about our psychological states. These findings reiterated the need for service members to feel less isolated when returning home after leaving theater and as they are leaving service, and how important a strong sense of community is for them. It's a protective factor, and because of this, creative forces became focused on lessening isolation in service members and veterans, and exploring ways in which the arts can help to bring them together, as well as improve connection and communication to the civilian population. Correlational findings also help the treatment team see the service member through a different perspective, and knowing what kinds of symbolism point to specific psychological health issues allows the art therapists and other providers to better plan their treatment needs moving forward. What our studies are really highlighting is the interplay between clinical practice and research, and how one can really inform the other to better serve service members and their families. I'm so grateful for collaborations with research partners such as Drexel University, Garija, and her doctoral students. They were able to view the artwork with fresh eyes and share objective findings related to the content of the service member artwork. And we at Drexel are so grateful for the institutional knowledge of creative arts therapists like Melissa working in Creative Forces, which facilitates our research. We have also worked on program evaluation studies with other sites that have both short-term and long-term art therapy programming. We are also in the process of conducting prospective studies to better understand the unique impact and contributions of art therapy on post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury. It's evident through this work that research is beginning to explore how the use of art therapy in clinical care can improve quality of life outcomes for military-connected populations. This research also supports further examination of system-wide benefits such as cost-effective, sustainable treatment options and provides a solid foundation to support our future research endeavors. For more information on Creative Forces clinical research, please visit us online at the Creative Forces National Resource Center website. Thank you.